another one of these young trumpet stars who I had the good fortune to work with when he was in college. And my claim to fame with Ron is that I don't think I ruined you or hurt you too bad. You still play great in spite of my best efforts. Oh, that's yeah, not true. You, yeah, yeah. You've, you've ruined it plenty of times. <laughs> Spoken like a true artist. All right. You're great, Bill. Thank You're you. Great. Thank you. So, uh, uh, Ron has been interviewed uh, quite a few times. Uh, uh, most uh, recently, a uh, terrific interview with uh, John Snell on Bob Reeves' uh, website, and that's a great one to catch up on Ron's history. Briefly, uh, Ron has uh, had a distinguished career uh, most recently with, uh, well, tell me, uh, what, what, what have, you've been working a lot with Poncho Sanchez, I know that. For the last 10 years, yeah. Last 10 years. I'm member of the Poncho Sanchez band. And how many trumpets does he use in the band? Just one. One, so you're like the lead, the jazz. Yeah, yeah. yep, many hats. Many hats, right. And then prior to that, you played with... Uh, uh, we played with Green Day. Green Day. I remember that because he called me up one day. He said, Bill, I got a gig playing with Green Day. And you remember what I said? So <laughs> Who's Green Day? Who's Green Day? <laughs> yeah, that's right. So now I got educated. And, uh, and so uh, that's very helpful. Uh, and then, uh, so uh, what are uh, other some of the jobs that you enjoy playing? I mean, obviously, these are great uh, performance opportunities. But what are some of the other things that you, like uh, some of the more, like if you were a major film uh, producer maybe you would produce an independent film and that would be something you'd like to do that maybe hasn't right. gotten as much acclaim right if you were just dr dre's latest cd uh, yeah you know, on that uh, but uh what are what are some of the things that uh, um ah you know um i just like any stuff that that uh you know that's that's true that takes me somewhere that i mm -hmm. want to be musically you know mm -hmm. i like playing with other good players i like um you know, I like the genres I like. I like Latin jazz. I like jazz. I like funk stuff. You right. Know? And basically anything that with good people and mm -hmm. good music, I I I I'd love there. to be a part of it. And right. So one of, one of the things is my CD I'm working on. That's a good example. It's got everything I like. Nice. Combined, and that's something I would like to do once I get it done. Nice. How, <laughs> how many tracks do you have? I have finished? Eight, eight eight tracks. Uh, three are finished. <laughs> wow. Okay. So you're getting there. Yeah, I'm getting there. Are you doing all the? Uh, you're doing the recording, the mixing, the. Uh... I'm not gonna mix it. Uh, uh -huh. I'm semi engineering everything, depending on cool. what's required. I, I try to get most everybody live, and then I'll overdub all the uh, sweeteners, the instruments. You know. Nice. You have uh, your your horn. You have your own studio, right? Yeah, yeah. I That's got nice. I dialed it in since 2000. We've been, you know fixing the gear up and everything and right. and now I got it running perfectly and not buying anything or upgrading anything. Sweet. <laughs> Sweet. What kind of microphones do you think record with a trumpet well that, that you enjoy working with? I like I like a, a good ribbon, you know. I'm a mm -hmm. fan of good condensers as well, you know, but but mm -hmm. ribbons definitely have a better sound for brass. I, mm -hmm. I've learned and I was taught that too because uh, condensers can get a little muffly because the way the sound hits the front, mm -hmm. and and if you're too close, it gets really muffly because they call it the bass effect, the bass proximity. Mm. So okay. a ribbon bypasses that by having you know you got a back pattern too, and you can nice. it, it cuts off a lot of those frequencies and makes it a little more right. brassy sound the way you want it to sound. Now, are there any in, uh, ribbon manufacturers that you would like if they were listening to this could send you a couple of demos? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, I've always been a fan. I mean, I'm a, whenever I'm in the studio or whatever, it's always a Royer, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Maybe a Coles, which is a nice, nice right. mic. Um, right. And then um, I, I, I play a, a blue mic. I, I'm a fan of blue mics. Uh, mm -hmm. They, uh, they sound right. good and they look good. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I, I also like uh, the Ruben. I think that's a time-honored tradition to record uh, brass instruments in the old studios. They used to use the old RCAs. Right, right. Which yeah, still... I just the the thing we did with Jim Self, they tried to use a, a one of the, a replica of a, a RCA hmm. or an A nice. AEA, I think the company was, but nice. it was it was yeah. sounding a little muffled in there. That's, so. That company's up here in uh, Altadena. Oh, yeah. okay. Uh, yeah, the West, is it West Dooley? Or? West Dooley, right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, so he ended up switching back to the Royer on the second day. <laughs> nice, but uh, interesting. Uh, the uh, still plenty of those uh, RCAs. Well, not plenty, but they're still around. I think Malcolm has a McNabb. Oh yeah, has quite a collection. They're they're museum pieces, pretty right. much. They're right. worth a lot. Worth a lot. Like buying a '57 Chevy or something. Right. Yeah. So today I thought it'd be fun because uh, you know, as 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 long as I've known you, you've been had this 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 great affinity for jazz. I mean, clearly when you were at uh, CSUN as a student there, you uh, you entered and won the uh, hello. 
<laughs> you won. Get the, me on it. <laughs> you won the competition. Get me on it. Uh, <laughs> okay, hold on. We can maybe edit this out, or maybe just leave it in. That's kind of a charm <laughs> to it. So. Shows you still get calls, Bill. It's yeah, good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, it's probably a bill collector, but that's beside the point. <laughs> All right, so uh, we're talking about uh, when you were at uh, CSUN, uh, you uh, entered a, the ITG Jazz uh, Solo Competition, and you won that. Right. Yeah, so even from an early age, you distinguished yourself as a, a jazz soloist. And so uh, what I wanted to find out today, because uh, many of the people who are listening today may think, ah, I can't play jazz or maybe I can play jazz a little bit, and uh, what do I do to get better at it? So uh, we can do play-alongs, or you can just talk about it and play. Or, uh, uh, maybe I, thought, I was thinking it would be kind of fun to do a play-along, you sure. know, just like a blues background or something, and you can kind of demonstrate um, what... Uh, I'll look it up. Excuse me for looking away. Play-along, here's, slow. Here's, okay, so here's a B-flat blues play-along, slow. Um, I don't know how slow. Here's a cool blues from Learn Jazz Standards. Yeah. Uh, here's a B flat blues. Here's a slow. Well, let's just take the first one that shows up. Man, you two, it's amazing. It is amazing, isn't it wonderful? So, what does this sound like? Robbing musicians for the last ten years. <laughs> no. So here's like a blues background. And say you got a beginner. First of all, can anybody play jazz, or is it? it can, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I think jazz is just the same as, as it's a language. Mm -hmm. And if you're, if, like I always say the same thing to everybody. If you're in a country and you don't speak the language, if you're there for a year, you're going to speak the language. Mm -hmm. So I say, you listen to jazz, that's how you're going to learn the language. Listening, listening, listening. So listen to jazz. That's yeah. the first thing. Right. Listen. Cool. You got to know the styles. You got to know the phrasings. And that's mm -hmm. the only way you'll get it. That's like putting the, the, the words together, the grammar together, you know. Yep. And the dialect together, it's all listening to it. So who do you recommend listening to? I mean, that opens up another question. There's a zillion people you can listen to. Ron I mean, Blake? Go, go, go to your favorites. Go to the, go to the you know, the, the Miles Davis, Lee Morgan, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Clifford Brown, if you want to get really technical and, mm -hmm. you know, there's a zillion guys you can listen to. Mm -hmm. I recommend starting off with Miles. Mm -hmm. You know, my dad playing a sax, he, he's learning the sax. He wants to jump right in and play play Coltrane, so he buys a Coltrane <laughs> Omni book. I'm like, Dad, can you start? You know, start with something a little more not not saying he's not melodic, but just yeah. something a little bit more yeah. reachable, like a yeah. Dexter Gordon or a Paul Desmond book or something like that. Be right. A little, you know, less. Yeah, but that's just the kind of guy your dad is. The awesome dad. Yeah. The, of all awesomest dads. Yeah. That, uh, all shoots for the moon. And, you know, so. <laughs> he, he's, he was getting them too yeah. for a while. Well, let's, so why don't you demonstrate a minute? I, I don't, don't play directly into the mic. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot. That's going to burn the mic. <laughs> These ribbons, they sure last long. A, yeah, I wonder why that one burned out. I don't know. <laughs> so I'll play this out. and then. And you yeah, can, just keep so, it simple. Yeah, just keep it if simple. You're, if you're starting out, yeah. first of all, you got to know the key. And um, you know, you just kind of just kind of work it in. Just go how you feel, you know. All right, so so you're going from uh, simple, and you went to me. That was a pretty big leap from simple to. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, what you just did there, I do in my dreams, right? <laughs> but. What uh, like people say it's really important. You got to know your scales, man. And, and so, oh, yeah. the, so the, the, it, to me, jazz is about scales, and it's about licks, and it's about theory. Yeah. But when you're playing, you probably don't think a whole lot about it. But, Not anymore. But that, but you did at one time. Spent some time with it, yes. right? Yes. Yeah. And that, that's again, that all comes back to this. I, I believe it's the same function as learning a language. You, you're gonna, you know, you say I'm, you know, learn, how do I say I'm hungry? 
You know, how am I going to play a blues scale and, and make mm-hmm. it fit into this, into this blues? You know? Yeah, I, I think what you just said is really important because you said, when you say, how do you say I'm hungry? Because l- jazz is a lot about a communication. It is. Um, almost more than any other kind of music, really. It is. Then, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a classical guy, too, but so I have to be careful what I say. The classical <laughs> side of me is going to be very upset. But, uh, but would you, like you say, when I'm hungry. So where does that emotional content come from? I mean, you play, and you, if you're a fine player, and you've, you know, you've got the tech, but without that, I, That all just special. comes from experience, mostly, Bill. That's something that can't be ever taught, I don't think. Mm-hmm. It's just from years and years of playing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, yeah, I've had lessons. Mm-hmm. I've, 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 I've played along to zillions of Abersols. But it's just, just a lot of playing and a lot of experience that you can mm-hmm. start being free with it, you know? Mm-hmm. And it'll start coming out of you. Right. Um, but you de- you definitely... I mean, and honestly, I got to say, there's a lot of guys that don't... They never studied jazz, you know? Chet Baker. Mm-hmm. A lot of guys that I've, that I've read on, mm-hmm. they... they they never read a note of their lives. It's just they they mm-hmm. they had their ears and they they listened to things and they mm-hmm. they just played. Right. And but, you know but what you said too is a uh, you know that uh, that that whole disconnect. I mean, you, you it, so you think that uh, it, it's not an intellectual pursuit then? No. No, it's more of an emotional outlet. Right? No, yeah. For me, just playing that little thing there, sitting there, I I just kind of went off of how I was feeling. I was like, oh, I'm going to be, it's real relaxed. I'm here with yes. Bill. I'm having right. a nice time. We have right. a nice lunch. Right. And I was playing a little blues and d- nice. to demonstrate it a little. And I think that's part of what the beauty of jazz is too, is that, is that uh, with classical music, Ron, by the way, was a very fine classical player too. I mean, he played things, I gave him things in college, that, like the Biche uh, variations. And <laughs> him up, man. You know, so uh, I think that's an important component of what he's able to do. Uh, and that is to have such good technique, uh, whether you play classical or jazz. Or I think it all it all incorporates. Right. It all yeah, comes there's in. There's another question because you did study classical music. You did. Hopefully, you found that helpful. Definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Especially, you know, uh, I, I I would love to to do that a little more. But you know, just listening to it, you get to listen to it, and mm-hmm. you can break it apart, mm-hmm. and uh, and you. I mean, there's so much of, of jazz in there. And, and vice versa, you know, it's they all everything's incorporated. Nice. So we one love, man, one love. One love. <laughs> That's a good name for a tune. Man. <laughs> think, uh, think Bob Marley's got that. Oh, okay, no man. So now we're we did the kind of beginning medium, and and maybe you could you could play a, a little like a twelve bars or something like that, and just kind of go from one to the next to the next. Or you know to to kind of give an idea of what what the three different levels like beginning level and see if we can tell when you get to the middle level and see if we can get when when you get to the more advanced level. Okay. Let me see. Well, I don't know how how advanced it'll be. This is all based on how I'm feeling. Yeah, so I, I think that's really important too. Because as soon as you do that to somebody, they think, and well, I have to think about it. Right, and it's not nearly as spontaneous. It's, it's right. nearly as good. Right, right, right. Right, I and mean, that's something I really try to avoid as much as I can because I, I I know that feeling when I go to the jazz, shake it to jazz solo uh, at CSUN, I'd remember always trying to oh I'm gonna play this lick at this spot yeah, and it would exactly. never come out the way. Exactly. Yeah, I was gonna say the same thing, man. But uh, when I try to show off, it just rarely sounds any good. <laughs> you know? And so, uh, why don't you just play uh, what feels good? And we'll not worry about the- <laughs> medium and, and, and advanced. Yeah. And fourth gear. <laughs> yeah. Really, yeah. yeah. Whatever.
Okay, beautiful. Uh, Yay, Ron. I was. I don't think that was very good. But. Yeah, but I could tell you were thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So here's what. I, but it was great. I mean, in my dreams, like I said. So here's the other thing. Uh, being you know so closely associated with Latin music, what do you ch does your jazz change when you play Latin music, or is it the background that changes, or what changes in your feel? Yeah. Um, your you're, jazz, nothing really changes. It's just the feel. Yeah. The feel changes a little bit. Right. Yeah. Because right. the rhythm section, I don't. I rarely get to play swing anymore. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it might be in a jam session, pretty much, which is something I rarely go to. Right. But uh, but yeah, it's 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 all it's always great to come back to to regular traditional swing music though, because right. it's something I don't get to do. Whereas Latin. I do it all the time. Right, so right. It's definitely a feel thing. And if you want to hear Ron uh, play some solos on Latin, he's on a quite a few Pancho Sanchez CDs, I believe. Yeah, I'm on four, the last four. Well, is there one CD in particular that you think is uh, uh, there's, that uh, shows off your playing a little? Yeah, I, I, there's a little bit of me in all of them, I guess. You okay. Know, there's uh, the one with Terrence Blanchard's pretty nice. I like that mm -hmm. one. Nice, nice. Very good. Well, this is maybe one of our longer. Uh, videos uh, so if you're still watching <laughs> are we live <laughs> uh, yeah live streaming yeah exactly uh, so uh, maybe Ron would you come back and do this again and talk sure. some more absolutely because I think we have a lot more to learn from you yeah yeah, yeah. absolutely I'm okay. glad I'm here glad to help cool. okay well thanks Ron I'll see you on the golf course okay so long Piffle. <laughs>